Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today it's part two of how I made this arcade cabinet. If you haven't seen part one of this project, you should probably go back and watch that because it shows the majority of the woodworking here, how I built the cabinet as you see it right now. But now I'm ready to build some drawers to fill up the back section. I made six drawers that were all exactly the same, so really it was cutting a lot of the same pieces over and over. I cut some short pieces for the front and the back of the drawers, and then two longer pieces for the sides. I used a stop block to make all these pieces the same length. That's really handy when you have to cut 12 pieces at the same size. Once I had all those pieces cut, I moved the blade of the table saw down so I could cut a dado on the inside of each piece. This is just a slot for the bottom of the drawer to fit in. The panel that I want to use for the bottom of the drawer and the blade are the same thickness, so I had to slide the fence over just slightly and then run all the pieces through again. This doubles the thickness of the dado so that the piece can fit inside of it. I cut down several pieces of plywood to use as the drawer fronts. They're taller than the drawer itself. Assembling the drawers is really simple, just some glue and brads to hold it all together. I wanted the drawer fronts not to have any holes in them, so instead, I pre-drilled some holes from the inside of the drawer so that I could run screws into the drawer face. I added some glue to hold it in place and then measured on each side to make sure that the overlap was even. I held the two pieces together with some clamps while I screwed them together. Then I made five more. I don't have a paint booth, so I made one outside with some plastic sheeting. Really just enough to keep the wind and the rain off of everything. I used an HVLP gun for the first time, and I really liked how it worked out. I was using a really cheap one from Harbor Freight, so it's nothing special, and it took a little bit of dialing in to get the right amount of paint coming out at the right speed. But once I got the hang of it, it actually worked really well and gave me good coverage. I picked a paint and primer combo that was a high gloss finish, thinking that would be a good surface for the vinyl to adhere to. Looking back on it, I think a satin probably would have looked better overall and still given a good surface. It took a while, but I finally got all the different surfaces painted. Now the paint raises the grain of the wood a little bit on the first coat, so I went back and did some rough sanding on all the different surfaces just to get them smooth. The ones that were going to be exposed, meaning not under vinyl, I went back and did another coat of paint on, but that's really not very much. The side panels are both going to get wrapped in T-molding, and that needs to go in a slot. So I used a slot cutting bit in a router and ran around the perimeter of both side panels. Now this first one was easy because it wasn't attached to anything, I could clamp it down to the table and easily go around it, but the other one was already attached to the cabinet. I actually didn't have room in my shop to lay the cabinet down on its side, so I had to do it standing up. Learn from my mistake, do it before you assemble the cabinet. The graphics were printed by a company called Mastro Graphics that did a fantastic job, super high quality prints, you should definitely check them out. The artwork was done by my good friend Dave Montez. I asked him to draw our family as superheroes. Look at that. So to apply these graphics, I laid out the pieces of vinyl on the side panels and used some blue tape to hold it in place once I got it centered. There was a lot of fiddling to get it in the exact right position because it had to be right, but once I got it to where I thought it needed to be, I peeled off the bottom edge. I used a knife to cut off the backing strip and then laid down the first bit of vinyl. It's adhesive, so it stuck right to the material. I pressed down in the center and then used a squeegee to work my way to the outside, pushing air bubbles out on the way. That end held the graphics in position so I could roll them up to get them out of the way. I put a couple of drops of dish soap in a spray bottle of water and sprayed the surface lightly before peeling back the backing and laying down the vinyl. This water actually stops the adhesive from working for just a little while, gives you enough time to push bubbles out of the way and reposition if you need to. It's pretty handy and a lot easier to work with than I expected. I spent a lot of time getting rid of all the bubbles. When you design your graphics, you do them a little bit oversized and then you give the printer a cut line to cut along. This gives you a little bit extra material around all the edges that you can lay down so you get a nice clean edge. On each one of the corners, I made a slit with a utility knife so that I had a flat piece to lay down. I didn't have any weird corners that I had to crumple into place. These pieces overlap the slot that I had cut for the T-molding, so I just trim those out with a knife. This process takes a little while, but it's really important because you want all of these edges to be really crisp. They start to bubble up a little bit because they're going around a corner, so you want to make sure you go back and push them all down. Honestly, I could not be happier with how this turned out. It looks amazing to me. I picked some orange tea molding to match the colors of my whole machine. This stuff has a barb on it that fits into the slot on the edge of the side panels. I started just by pushing it in with my hands and then started to hammer it in with a rubber mallet. I didn't really think ahead about how this stuff would work in the corners, and so I didn't put that into the design. 
In this first one, I decided to cut through it, thinking I could make a nice clean seam. But it turns out that because of the curvature of the outside of the T-molding, it's actually pretty hard to do. So after this one, I realized that instead of cutting the outside of the T-molding, it actually makes more sense to cut the inside, to cut the barb. So in this case, I marked where the center point was and then cut a chunk out that made it fit around a corner. This worked pretty well and I got better at it as I went along. Now if you wanted to avoid that entirely, you could design your side panels to just have curves and no actual corners. That would make it a lot simpler. The material that goes on top of the control panel is not the same kind of vinyl. It's actually a thicker polycarbon. It's the same stuff you would find on an actual arcade cabinet. I used the same spray technique as before to put this stuff down and was able to slide it around to get it into the position that I wanted. It wasn't lining up with anything except the front edge. Once I got it where I wanted, I used the squeegee to get rid of the air bubbles and push out the excess water on the front. The polycarbonate is a little bit too thick to wrap around the edge, so instead, I carried the design over to a regular piece of vinyl, put on a little bit of water, and then laid on the vinyl and then just lined up the artwork. I also wanted to get the seam between the two materials as tight as possible so it looked like one piece that was carried over the edge. I squeegeed out the air bubbles and water just like before and then used a knife to cut off the excess pieces so that the vinyl would wrap around all the edges and corners. For the excess polycarbonate on the top panel, I wanted it to be cut as close as possible, so I used a blade right along the edge. To cut out the holes for the controls, I flipped the board over and then poked a little hole in the middle of each one of the areas. Then when I flipped the board back over, I knew where to cut out. From this center point, I used a sharp knife to cut out each one of the circles around where the button went. I started out with this kind of pie shape, and it ended up being quite a bit of work. I tested the buttons and made sure they fit, and once they did, I went through and cut all the rest of them out. For the rest of these, I started at the center, went to the edge, and then around the edge. It was much faster, much easier. I fit all the buttons into their right place, and then screwed on the nut for each one on the back to hold it in position. I put the joysticks in place and centered them within the hole, and then traced the outline of the joystick on the underside. From here, I could start some pilot holes before screwing in each joystick. Each one of them get a cover to cover the hole in the board, and then I just screwed on the ball to the top. There's one more piece of vinyl that lines up with the artwork from the control board, but it actually goes on the cabinet. So in this case, I set it in place, lined up the artwork, and then taped it down. This told me where the edges needed to be, so I made just a small mark with the knife before taking it off and cutting it on my cutting mat. I used a straight edge just to have a nice clean cut. This piece got applied to the front of the control box, just the same as the other pieces. It was already cut to width, so I just had to line up the top with the top edge. I applied it, squeezed out the air bubbles and the water with the squeegee, and then wrapped the bottom around the bottom edge. The marquee was printed on a piece of Lexan that I sent in, and it has a solid white base on the back of it, so it has a nice even backlight. I figured out where it needed to go, and then used some super glue to hold it in. To cover the speakers, I found some cheap replacement speaker grills. These were a little bit bigger than the hole that I drilled, so I centered them over the hole, pre-drilled, and screwed them in place. I only had silver screws, so I just blackened them with a black sharpie. On the back of the panel, I just centered the speakers over the hole and then screwed them in place. The drawer slides have a piece that comes out on each one of them, and this is what gets attached to the drawer itself. To keep them consistent, I pushed the slides all the way to the front and the bottom edges. This way, all the faces will be flush when they're installed. When you push these back in, they lock together. I did the same thing for the other five shelves and then just slid them all into place. And it turned out to be a whole lot of storage. To mount the side panel, I used a 48 inch piano hinge. I found the center of it and cut it in half with a cutting wheel on my Dremel tool. I lined it up with the back edge and then marked the center of the top hole so I could drive in a screw. I did the first one by hand because I didn't want it to drift at all. This needs to be precisely lined up with the back edge. But for all the other ones, I pre-drilled the holes and then just drove in a screw. I lined up half of this hinge with the very top and the other half with the very bottom. So there is a gap in the middle, but it hinges just fine. To mount the side panel, I set it on the same size spacer that I had the machine setting on, lined up the back edges again, and then marked the point before pre-drilling and screwing it onto the hinges. The hinge worked great, and all that storage is now hidden. I want to take a quick second to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Sponsorships from companies like Audible help make these videos possible. Now recently on Audible, I've been listening to Ready Player One. It's a really fun science fiction story that's all about video games. So if you like this thing, you will like Ready Player One. There's tons of 80s pop culture and video game references. It's a lot of fun. 
You can get that book for free if you go to audible.com slash make stuff and sign up for a one month trial. It's a free trial and you get a free book. And if that book's not your thing, they have 180,000 other books that you could pick from. So make sure you go to audible.com slash make stuff and sign up for a free trial. All right, the cabinet is almost entirely finished. I got a couple of details to do next time and we're gonna walk through all the electronics and get them installed. I can't wait to show you this thing in its fully completed form. I'm super happy with it. When that video is available, you can get to it by clicking right here or you can go back to part one if you haven't seen that. If you wanna build your own cabinet just like this, I've got plans available that you can download. And if you wanna see what I'm up to in between these videos throughout the week, be sure to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. I post there pretty often. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in part three.